when we take up permanent residence, when we take up permanent residence and a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house, becomes at home and mature in us so that we're free of worry on judgment day. Our standing in the world is identical with Christ. There is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment is one not yet fully formed in love. All right, Pastor, I saw your hand go up and then the clink scales. I was just going to say, glory to God, when you consider what, how, how powerful and how awesome and enduring love is, you know, you see Jesus on the cross, Jesus on the cross, and he, he could have wore them soldiers out, glory to God. And it wasn't the nails, as they sing in the, in the song, but it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. It was love. Love for all of us that kept him on that cross so that he could redeem us and bring us back to himself. Love is powerful. Amen. Amen. Come on, Clink Scales. I just want to say something about the part that says love thinks no evil. Mm. Um, and I know I see some about me and some of these, some of the movies that I want and it's like just in the of course they're in the world. And I mean the people was in love one second <laughs> and next minute, oh, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's go through this whole thing and that's all they're doing in the whole movies. People were just in love with each other. Now they're trying to do something hateful or <laughs> sinful to each other. And it's just like totally un ungodly. Think no evil. If you, you know, that just lends more credence to the uh, be angry but sin not. Don't let the sun set on your wrath. Mm -hmm. uh, showing each other a little grace when you got mad. And the movie will probably be over in 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours of that mess. Just have a little, little God in your life. So you can get issue a little grace and y'all can move on from that that thought that, you know, another thing, Pastor, always talk about some of the stuff that'll just pop into your head. Yeah. This miss that madness and refer back to that love scripture in Galatia. Think that's Mr. Thanks. Amen. Um, and so, um, Dean Klinkscale, one of the things that my grandmother used to say, um, and I didn't understand it, she passed away when I was 14, is she would say one of the reasons there's so much divorces and you hear with this person and not with that person, she'd be fussing at my, my auntie and my cousins is because they sit up and watch them soap operas and the soap operas I have you thinking that your relationship ain't right, that something's wrong because you're trying to make your relationship what you see on TV. All those takes and edits and it's 30 minutes that they take to make that. And you've been together with somebody for 30 years and all of a sudden the marriage ain't working or the relationship ain't working, those kind of things. So the devil is the prince and the power of the air. So we do have to watch what we watch and watch what we hear, which is why we come to Bible study in Sunday school to get the truth. And at the end of the day, keep your scripture and your song to bring the truth back to you. And so we have an activity where we're going to deep dive into love demonstrated. Um, we're going to journey through the Bible together and record scriptures. Each of you have a copy of this. You're going to record scriptures that show the spirit of love demonstrated. In modern times, we symbolize love with a heart. However, the greatest demonstration of the, of the spirit of love is Christ's unfailing act of love on the cross. So this is a picture of a cross. Um, and we're just going to go through some of the scriptures or stories in the Bible where love was demonstrated. And so as you all take a moment 
to find your scriptures or your stories in the Bible, just the scripture that tells the story. Um, you can tell the story and then give us the scripture so people can use their journals. Or if you printed this sheet out, you can write that in there because you have to find a space, a story, something that you connect to, which is why God spoke and inspired the word of God, why he inspired the Bible and these people to tell what he had done for them and through them is because he knew we would need it. This is an instruction manual. So we're all going to take a moment, think about love demonstrated in the Bible. Could be one scripture, it could be a story. Um, while we do that, I need um, someone to get Hosea um, 1 and 2. Hosea is the book between Daniel and Joel. So Hosea. So I need someone to get Hosea 1 and 2. Hosea 2, 19 and 20, and then Hosea 3 and 1. Raise your hand. In the me. Message Bible? Um, in any version. Uh, Missionary Smith, do you have Hosea 1 and 2? Yes, I do. Hosea 1 and 2 reads, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. Amen. So the Lord came to a man and he said, I need you to take yourself a wife of harlotry, whoredom. There's different words that it uses. I need you to go find you a loose woman. We're all adults on here. And have children with her. For the land had committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. So God wanted to use Hosea to feel how he felt because Israel was acting up. Could you imagine that? To say, Lord, I will trust you and go get my heart broken and look like a fool in front of this whole country and I'm preaching your word. So you want me to preach and be mistreated publicly? Are you serious? Let's talk about love. Let's talk about that un failing love. Hosea 2, 19 and 20. Who has that? And when you all get a chance, read Hosea 1, 2, and 3. Y'all think all of these um, reality shows and all of that just came up? The Bible was there way before Atlanta had a housewife. Come on, pastor. All right, 19. And I will betroth uh, you, Israel, to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you. This is the Amplified Version. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in loving kindness and loyalty, and in compassion. I will betroth you to me in stability and in faithfulness. Then you will know, recognize, and appreciate the Lord and respond with loving faithfulness. How on earth, Lord, do you want me to respond and faithfulness and with all of this fruit to somebody that I know, that I know that I know is going to cheat on me because the Lord told me they were going to cheat on me before I took them. Could you imagine loving someone so deeply? Y'all have to read this story because Gomer, she didn't just go out once or twice. She went out and the Lord had to go out or um, Hosea had to go out and buy her back. If he had to go buy her back to me, that was the sense that he had divorced her. He was like, man, I'm done with this. I'm here taking care of these kids and you out there doing, you know what? Baby, listen, who has Hosea three and one? Okay, I got two hands. Okay. No, 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 I was going to say something else. Go ahead, Sister Gina. Hosea 3 and 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress 
according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons, flagons of wine. Mm-mm-mm. Go get her again. That's what Jesus, that's what the Lord said to Hosea. Go get her again. I, I know, I know she left again, but go get her again. Not just go get her again, but go again, love a woman who is loved by a lover or another man and is committing adultery, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel who look to other gods. I mean, Lord, I know we all cry out. We get to the altar. Use me, Lord. Here am I, God. Really? Can you, when called by God, love without condition? Love bleeding? Come on, Pastor. I know you had something to say. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, glory to God. It is not like God told Hosea to go get this prostitute, glory to God, but only, but the fact that Hosea was powerful. Hosea was the prophet. Hosea was the man of God. And so, and that's why, I, obviously, why God used him, because he was visible. People could see his pain. He, he was ridiculed. He was talked about. He was made fun of. You know, I was reading, you mentioned a Message Bible, and so I wanted to read what um, Sister Gina just read from the Message Bible, and it says, then God ordered me, start all over, love your wife again. Your wife who is in bed with her latest boyfriend, your cheating wife. Love her the way I, God, love the Israelite people, even as they flirt and party with every God that takes their fancy. Listen, we talking about love, y'all. Someone just said love covers a multitude of sin, which is the word. Love covers a multitude of sin. So when we get all haughty in spirit, thinking we are the greatest thing since Calvary, can you love that way? Can you demonstrate that kind of love? Can you go back countless times and say, man, sis, man, bro, I know that you, you've done this to me. It's hard for us to trust each other, but I'm going to give you another chance. Mm. That's love. And so I wanted you to see love demonstrated. Missionary Smith. I was just thinking, it's just so amazing to me how there's nothing new under the sun. I mean, those people, if she, he had to go out and, and get Gomer over and over and over again. And God has to do the same thing with us. We'll always, you know, yeah, Lord, I love you. I love you. But then as soon as something come up and look a little better, we think it's better to go off running. And he has to love us back to him. So it's, it's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Nothing new under the sun. You think the grass is greener. That grass ain't even real. <laughs> they got turf. And you're like, oh, that grass is growing nice. Let me go. You spend hundreds of thousands trying to make your house look like theirs. You can't see inside their house. It ain't even clean. And so demonstrate, how do we make sure that we understand what demonstrating Christ's unfailing act of love on the cross means? How do we know that we do that? Who else has a scripture or a story in the Bible that demonstrates that kind of unfailing love? This is where we grow. This is how we grow. You print this out. And you continue to write in it when you feel like, oh, I just, I can't do this anymore. I'm not saying that, that God is calling you to go be willfully hurt. There are those people that God calls Hosea, a pastor, a preacher. When we see the things that pastors and leaders go through, God has called them. That's the difference in call. There are those who pastored, they went through something and all of a sudden they didn't gave up the whole church. Were they really called? Missionary Spalding and then Deacon Hooker.
Missionary Spalding? Hello. Yep. Yes. I just wanted to share the story. And I got to go search the scripture to find exactly where it is. But the story of Naomi and Ruth. How Naomi, uh, how Ruth told her that I will go with you and your God will be my God. You know, that that was love because she could have left Ruth and went back wherever she came from. But she decided to stick with her mother-in-law. And I got to look up that scripture. I got to search my Bible because I don't know exactly what scripture, but that's the story that I did want to share was Naomi and Ruth and and the love that Ruth share, showed to Naomi. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we can all look that up, but we want to make sure you guys write down these stories and scriptures because you want to be able to demonstrate this kind of love. And you need to know why God called those people and how they found the strength to be obedient in the pain. Um, Deacon Hooker? Yes, I, I saw Sister Gina put the scripture <laughs> in the chat that I was going to uh, say. It's John 3.16. For God so loved the world. Uh, Jesus went through all of that because he loved us. And he sacrificed himself. That's love. Yeah. Amen. Come on, um, so cousin Barbara Smothers, and then Sister Gina. God bless you. And um, and in Romans twelve and ten, it says, "Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, and honoring, preferring one another." And so it, it, it's telling us how to love. Be kind. You know, to our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Sister Gina. God bless you. It's actually Sister Kim. Oh, God bless you, saints of God. Jesus Christ gave the greatest example of love. And when you were talking about love, one of the scriptures that came to my mind was John 3. Pardon me, John uh, 15, 13, I believe. A uh, greater love than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. Jesus Christ came down from his throne of grace. He came down and endured so much punishment and no fault of his own. Who he do that for? Who did he do that for? He did that for you and I. Came down from his heavenly home, his throne of grace, and endured so much punishment and no fault of your own. Greater love than this, that a man gave, gave that, get, give up his life. Greater love than this, that a man they, uh, lay down his life. For who? His friends. For you and I. God bless. Amen. 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 Who we have? The clink scales? Yes. Uh, I have uh, Proverbs 17 and 17, where it says, A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. That scripture speaks to me from a point of manhood and how we as men ought to be able to love each other and to be there for each other um, as God would uh, have us do as opposed to some of the things that we go through as, 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 as men, where we always at odds for various, various reasons. So um, I was just looking at that scripture and that just caught my eye because of that. A friend loveth at all times, at all times. Okay. We can be upset with each other every now and then, but that's just a blip on the radar. You should be all right after you, you know, after you are angry, but you sin not. Amen. Give me that scripture again so I can write that down. Uh, Proverbs 17 and 17. 17. 17. All right. And then um, if you go to uh, Genesis and 20, 29, Genesis 29, um, the Jacob, Rachel, and Lee love triangle. That's a good one. Y'all just write down Genesis 29. That for me, 
um, just reading and looking at and understanding what was happening in that story um, and thinking he would get the one sister and got the other and went back to work seven more years. <laughs> now that, that was love. And so what we want to do is be able to demonstrate Christ's love for one another. But we also want to make sure that that fruit, the spirit of love, I'm not just talking about the act of love, but the spirit of love that see your brother and your sister through the eyes of Christ, through the blood of Jesus. Can you do that? I know I do my best. I do my very best. And y'all trust me. I fast and I pray and I, I ask God, Lord, help me with this. So much so I get exhausted just mentally thinking about making sure I can treat them as Christ would treat them, but being careful that we also um, have our armor on. You have to fast and pray. You have to continually have your armor on, lest you also be tempted by that behavior. Sister Sybil? Sister Sybil? Yeah, um, I can do that with some people, but with like somebody like President Trump, oh, no, mm -mm. <laughs> I'll be rejoicing for the DA. Amen. I didn't say it was easy, but we were talking about in Sunday school, which I think this goes into as well, creation. And I'm going to say a hard thing, but God created Trump too. He is God's creation. Now, whether or not he choose to follow Christ or he choose to be like the Israelites was and to have his own false idols and choices, Jesus died so that we could all choose. We're choosing to love. We're choosing to love. Amen. I love him, but I ain't going to let him mistreat me. Pastor? I was just thinking, uh, even as Sister Sybil was talking about Trump, uh, we love with the agape love. We love with God's love. So it's a, it's a brotherly love for mankind. It's, it's that love. Uh, but that doesn't mean we like what folks do. Uh, right. We love God and we love them, glory to God. But we, we detest the thing that they do because it's sin. All right. And so uh, and you, I'm, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Trump, glory to God, uh, is a evil man, glory to God, and a proudly evil man. Uh, and he inspires others to be evil. Uh, and so we do not like, uh, we do not love the things that he does, but uh, but uh, we do love the thing, the man, but we detest the things that he does, the things that he stands for. And it's important for us to get this um, because uh, there, who knows when God will change or if God will change that man's life. He's able. I know Trump seemed like he's, you know, something else, but he's able. God is able to turn that man's life around uh, and he become a witness for the kingdom. Amen. Because of his, his uh, being known as he is. So we pray, we pray for his soul that he be saved, no matter who he is. We pray for the soul that he'll be saved. Amen. And uh, I want to be, you know, real clear. I understand what you're saying, Sister Silver, though, um, because he absolutely upsets me. But glory to God, I pray that his soul be saved. Amen. 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 I heard um, Bishop at the convocation say, we, we got to be careful that we don't behave like God's mercy stopped with us. And that is something I wrote down and I kept it. We, we have to be mindful that we are the saint. We are claiming to be a part of this vine. We are claiming to be a part of this tree, bearing the same fruit of the tree. The tree is Jesus Christ. And I am so grateful to God that we are in this series um, we are going to keep going. Um, does anyone else have any 
um, scriptures that they want to share for um, demonstrated acts of unfailing love. Demonstrated acts of unfailing love. God shows us love by forgiveness of sin. Absolutely. And God forgives us again and again and again. And he forgives us immediately. If you confess your sins, repentance is real. Repentance is absolutely real. Lord, help me. This thing I know is wrong and I'm not going to do it again. Pray, turn. Turning is the key. It's not, Lord, I'm sorry, but you still got your hand in the cookie jar. And so God gives us these shocking but real examples of unfailing love and what he will cause you to do, who he will cause you to love. And love is not, it is not fear. It is not fear-based. But love does not hurt, right? And so God is not telling you to go be abused and go. I want to be very careful that in this lesson, while we talk about love, what God is saying and what he is not saying, you display the attributes of God. You move at the sound of God's voice. God will tell you, this is not how I want you to be treated, son. This is not how I want you to be treated, daughter. Yes, love them but love them at a distance and be safe. And so I just want to make sure that I make that clear and um, that God is not asking you to be in a pain in that way. But when he builds you and trusts you with someone, with a life, with whatever it is to witness, God will tell you and be careful that we can hear God's voice. That's a part of us displaying the fruits of the spirit and those being an evidence. Um, Deaconess Smothers and then Missionary Spalding. Excuse me. Good evening, everyone. You know, I was looking at 1 Peter 4, and let me get the right verse. Hold on. I don't want to quote it wrong. But it's about love and how love helps you look past everything. 1 Peter 4 and 8 put past all faults and above all things. It's 1 Peter 4 and 8. Have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins and how you have to have love for people no matter what it is, no matter what their past sins may have been to you, no matter how dirty and rotten they treated you, no matter how ugly Trump is, no matter how much dirt he's done, you got to have love and be able to love him as, as Pastor said, with that agape love, that love that surpasses all understanding that we all say we try to do. And I agree with you, Missionary Hunter. It's a very difficult thing to do. When we've been wronged by people, I remember I had an aunt and I talked to Pastor about it and that person showed up at church and I didn't know how to, how to handle that. You know, they had done something terrible to me in my past. And I was like, oh my God, what am I to do with this? But you know, when I talked to pastor, it immediately got lifted and I was able to go to that person and whisper in their ear, I forgive you, whether they received that or not. But God allowed me to say it, not just say it, but to mean it and not have any hard feelings towards that person. And so I'm learning to do that with everyone because people make me look, I allow folks to get on my nerves every day. Every I don't know about y'all, but somebody ticks me to the tickiest of ticks. They make me want to unball my fists and ball them back up, you know, and be ready to go, go for it. But the Lord allows me to have that love and say, you know what? Today I was walking and I was talking to somebody and I said, you know, that person that's sitting up there that I'm mad at because it's my cousin and she won't stop smoking crack and she's 72 years old and I just know that she's going to kill herself and I'm just angry with her because she always calls the paramedics at her house every other day because she think her brains is blowed out. I got to have love for her. I can't be angry at her. I got to pray for her, ask God to deliver her because she's deliverable. And let me tell you something. There's a saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost woman that's her caretaker that done hang on, that has hung on with her for the last five years. So I know God's doing some kind of work, but I just like that scripture because it says we have to. Wow. We, okay, we have to. 
and I have to. When I say we have to, I'm talking about me. And I thank God that he's working in me to allow me to do that. Thank you for this time. And I got my license today, everybody. Thank you for praying for me. Congratulations. All right, Missionary Spaulding. Why are we, oh, they're here. Oh, yeah, I just, I it, it, when everything was going forth and I was just thinking about uh, uh, love uh, and I, I just thought about uh, uh, when, when this man murdered my brother and how God gave me in my heart to forgive him. And that was a whole, to me, a huge demonstration of God's love because it had to be God's love because if it had been me, I probably would still be mad at him today, you know, unforgiving. But, you know, God's love showed me that I needed to forgive that person. And I just wanted to share that. That's it. Amen. Thank you, missionary. And then missionary Rigming, um, the story of David and Saul. He spared Saul's life in 1 Samuel 24 through 26. He yet respected him being called of God um, through Saul, though Saul was jealous. And absolutely, right? And so um, I, again, we're going to keep going. Um, next week we have, <coughs> excuse me, um, Joy and, <coughs> y'all forgive me. We have Joy and Peace. Coming with the joyous and peaceful one, Deaconess Lisa Beverly. I am really excited about that. And so um, we do have that. Um, so we're coming back. Like this whole series is going to be amazing. You all keep your homework paper um, so that you can write in those stories of love. Um, because love, it does cover a multitude of sin, but God is love. He who does not love does not know God. And that is the absolute truth. And so um, I am going to put it back in the hands of our pastor. Amen. Um, and again, you all have your lessons. Invite somebody um, to come back and join us for Bible study. Wonderful Bible study. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. Glory to God. Let's put some hands up in the, in the reaction box. Amen. In the chat box. Uh, I got to tell you, that was that was powerful. It was fire. Glory to God. And it's important. And I, the Lord really, let me say this. Yeah, one of the great, uh, another great uh, example of love is Joseph. Glory to God. Knowing what he went through with his family. And then at the end, he was able to spare their lives, save their lives. Glory to God. I do want to share with us, though. Um, let me caution each one of us as saints of the Most High God people who love the Lord with all of your heart. I want to caution you that you don't let this just be all of these, the, the attributes that are in this, in this spirit to just be something out there in the eye, some pie in the sky, something for somebody else to do. Something that if I don't get it right now, we can write it off. Like I'm, I ain't got that yet. I, you know, some folks say, yeah, but I ain't got it all yet. I ain't got it all yet. But God is requiring you to grow in grace and in knowledge. God is requiring you to move beyond faith to faithfulness so that that becomes an action in your life. And that's how it happens when we use the, when we take these attributes and apply them to our lives and grow them in our lives, glory to God. And sometimes the only way we can deal with long suffering is that somebody challenge us. And somebody, you know, just gets on our nerves. We didn't told them three times. Right. Uh, and the Lord is the law is if you think about it, the Lord might be working on your long suffering right then. Huh? Glory to God. And, uh, you know, sometimes you hear folks say, I don't know what but they always messing up. They always and they, the Lord might be working on your gentleness right then. Your compassion. Long suffering. 
Glory to God. And so when we when we consider this, when we are actively thinking about what God is doing, not just letting it pass by, but thinking about what God is doing in my life. God, you're growing me up. And I'm so appreciative. Now, God, this is a tough lesson, but I know that it's not going to destroy me, but rather I'm going to grow and be better and indeed be a better witness a better example of righteousness. I'll be all the better. So thank you for this, uh, the study of the fruit of the spirit, uh, missionary hunter. That was, it was wonderful. And again, as she stated, I want to say to everybody here, we're in this series now dealing with the fruit of the spirit. Amen. We're in this series. We've been doing series for a couple of years now. Uh, glory to God. And this year has been just about all series, but I, we, we think it has been uh, our hope that we get a better grasp on what the subject matter when we spend some time in that subject matter, when we explore it from different points of view and from different avenues and from different uh, portions of the Bible. Um, and hopefully this will cause you to really think about you, how you can grow, how you can be better used by God. Amen how you can be better used by God, how you could be, uh, remember that song they used to sing, Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. <laughs> you know, y'all remember that song? Glory to God. Uh, but I got to tell you, that's where we've got to be is, Lord, I'm available to you. And that means that you're not going to understand everything that God is doing, but you know God is doing it. All right, Gomer, Gomer couldn't, it, it, I mean, I'm sorry, Hosea couldn't understand Glory to God, why he had to go down and marry Gomer. Glory to God, and suffer with all of that. But God had a plan. God had a purpose for it. And he blessed the nation, showed the nation what was going on through the life of this man. Amen? Glory to God. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns as we move forward? Glory to God to close out this particular Bible study. Uh, any comments, comment, Pastor? Yes, sir. Glenn Ivory. Good evening. God bless you, Pastor. Yes, yes, big man. God bless all my brothers and sisters. I just wanted to take time out to say, Missionary Hunter, you are wonderful tonight. We enjoy this Bible study. I like the way you break it down and give us assignments and call us to go into the scripture and dig out stuff. It was wonderful. Those are my comments for tonight. Amen. God bless. Wonderful. Thank you, my brother. You're absolutely right. And uh, let me just tell you, saints of God, um, we are a good, wonderful church. We encourage one another. We support one another. Amen. And I just want to remind you of that. I just want to tell you that. Amen. I want to let you know that that's who we are. Uh, glory to God. All of us have different gifts and all of us have different abilities and, you know, tolerances and all of that. Uh, but we all love one another. We support one another. Thank you for this Bible study tonight as we grow. Come on back next week. Listen, I'm going to ask everybody to get your seed together. Come on, Andy. We need all of the folks to sow their seeds tonight. Uh, glory to God. We need everybody to sow your seeds tonight. Amen. Glory to God. We need to do some planting. We need some harvesting. Yeah. So if you'll do that tonight. We only ask um, those of you who will. We only ask you for ten dollars or, or whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Glory to God. So it's not much, but if we all do it, it'll make a, a nice dent in what we're dealing with. Uh, all right. Um, there might be some announcements we need to hear. Uh, yes, let me. I know I have an announcement, Pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the tribe of Judah under the leadership of Elder Gregory Ivory mm -hmm. and all those working along with them. There it is right there. There it is. There it is. That's the announcement I was going to make. You all can take it from here. There you go. Take it from here. Amen. The Appreciation Tribe of Judah will be hosting a dinner sale um, Sunday, September 10th, it is only $20 a plate. You get fried fish, fried chicken, potato salad, corn on the cob, bread, dessert, and a drink. 
Um, so listen, you can't go nowhere after church for $20 and get this kind of food. You just can't. So go ahead, order your food, pre-order so they know how much to buy. Um, it's going to be good. We already know that. So support the tribe of Judah um, for their appreciation dinner sale. All of this is for celebrating our pastor and his wife. Was there someone um, else on there? Um, I just want to, oh, go ahead. 